Perhaps you just started or never bothered to learn. Regardless of which, you want to know how to start a game of Stellaris on the right foot. Ah, well you've come to the right place then. Get yourself a bottle of heaviest mind-altering substance possible. It's time to learn what is the best empire and how to begin properly. Oh, and of course, do support content creators on Patreon. So yeah, check out mine. Link in the description. Let's then start with empire creation. As with any pathetic joke, you can tell everyone that you don't play to win, and that's fine. The galaxy needs cowards and nature's mistakes, otherwise known as pacifists. But the fact is, everyone plays for the win. And the fact that you simply suck is no excuse to say, well, I don't play to win. Line, okay, just okay, no. Evolve a little bit and try again. But seriously though, Stellaris is a rather interesting strategy game that you can legitimately play for the narrative and story building. For that gameplay, just literally ignore anything that I'm suggesting here. Just enjoy yourself. However, for the rest of you who actually want to succeed, well, it's time to learn how to build an empire. And much like the space Hitler that you're about to become, the final solution is not just one. Now first we start with a good name, something that will show what you're all about. Yep, that will assert dominance! After that, picking the type of a race and all other nonsense cosmetic things I'll leave up to you. What matters here is the origin, civics, traits, ethics and government. Let's start with the fun one, the origin. Now, you could just pick any of them and do well, but like with communism, some things are more equal than others, if you catch my drift. As it happens, for a long time within Stellaris, Ring World Origin has been incredibly powerful. So, unless our beloved developers decide to utterly nuke the rings, you probably will pick that for incredibly good start and mid-game. The problem with rings is that they aren't as easy to play for a newbie. See, the usual economy balancing methods still apply, but planet management? Well, that's now a bit different. It may throw you off balance at first, especially with sector unlocks, but after a few tries, it shouldn't be much of a problem. Still, if you don't want the ring world and instead a normal planet, I mean, you can try the RNGs has just snorted a kilo cocaine mode. Uh, I mean, doomsday origin, but that's for mentally insane people. Now, what I recommend is, well, actually the default origin, the prosperous unification. It is nothing special, as one of Latvian politicians once said. If you want the best start for you, well, why complicate things? Just pick the middle of the road empire. In fact, you can even just pick one of the pre-mates and be done. It's great for learning. As for other good options, hmm, well, I'd say Mechanist, or better yet, Machine World is not bad for machine builds and synthetic evolution for the breeders. So either you're gonna be pumping babies or wind-up toys. Either way, Gatling gunning the progeny is an option for fast growth. After the origin is chosen, you go on with government and ethics. Here, point blank, just, just, high minds rule all. That, that's just it. Yes, you can do well with peps. <laughs> You can pacif- p pathetic cowards, but really to do well. Gestalt consciousness is basically the way forward. Again, machine or hive minds, pick your poison. As for the civics, ooh, well, hmm, things can get pretty gnarly. I personally love devouring swarm, as well as other total war empires, but they trade in any and all goodwill for good bonuses. So if you choose one of these, know that everyone will go to war with you as soon as they can. You will be fun. Now for this I have made a video, so go check it out how to play it, but if you can survive, oh god, it's great. Proper victory is quick if you do things very correctly. High skill, high reward, but absolutely highest risk. Well, okay, except for the Jesus on speed, Doomsday Origin, of course. Oh, and some say that meta build as of 3.0 is Litoid's Terror War. Basically the same as Devouring Swarm, just that you can, you know, consume the world. But in case you don't want a total war all-out psychopath empire, well, then probably them materialist technocracy empires will do you most favors. This will require you to focus on research to some extent, so be careful not to forget your economy. 
As for additional civics and traits that you have, well, obviously if you plan on focusing breeding your pops, pick appropriate traits that would support it. Not, you know, politics. For research, obviously some more research-based traits. Of course, taking into account your origin, you can do something a bit different, like rounding out your empire, but just know that the smartest approach is, uh, at least for now, to do really well in one specific area, and through extensive abusal of it, dominate the galaxy. Okay, well the empire is made, all the cosmetical nonsense is chosen, now what? Well, obviously subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, like a video, well what do you think? Play, of course! Before unfreezing the time, pick your science projects. Your goal, no matter what you play, is always to get the strike craft first. To this day, it's the biggest and strongest defensive attachment. For Total War Empires, this literally makes or breaks the game. As for other research, well, generally pick the research speed at first and move on. Also, before unfreezing, unequip your combat ships. This is a little nifty trick that DJ Truce showed me. You open up your ship designer and, like a horny 13 year old, strip their corvettes completely. Then force them to unequip and thus downgrade. This gives you a little bit of resources to play with. And final part of starting out, just open up your starting planet or more likely ring and examine those tile blockers. You can unblock. Depending on the origin, some may immediately give you an extra pop. This is a very big boost for your economy and progression at the start. So not picking it is, while not exactly noticeable, will still hurt if not done. Then order your science ship to go and explore and unfreeze the time and here we go. When starting out I like to run at the bare minimum of three science ships, just exploring my surroundings on the smallest galaxies, then twice as many on the larger ones. Yes, I know it's kind of wasting your resources, but still, with the changes in discoveries and the first contacts in 3.0, I say it's worth it. Then when you have sent out your ships to discover things in a massive queue, look at your ascension perks. Here we have a few choices. Usually the three picks that everyone chooses are either Discovery and picking the perk that increases survey speed so that you can actually discover your surroundings a lot quicker. Makes sense for an opening gambit, if you will. The other one is Expansion, so that you can build up borders quicker. For that though, you might need some extra science ships to just keep up with the expansion. And the last one, Supremacy. This one, well, this one usually is picked after the first two. Uh, there is this wonderful defensive perk that allows you to, with those a strike craft, of course, completely fight off any and all intruders, so that when the time comes to present your opponent with a brick wall that they can bash their heads against for a couple of years, now you know what to pick. Speak of delicious brick walls, make sure to build up your choke points. This is actually more important than pure expansion. I mean, all the sensor strategies and tactics apply. I mean, shouldn't go without saying, but still. Additionally, to make your exploration far faster, always leave it for now on those anomalies that you find. All of them. You can research all of them later. Trust me, for now, the start of the game, you need to find your enemy. And finally, the best start for your economy? Well, play slow, play reactionary gameplay. Yes, more advanced players will pretty much know what to pick ahead of the time, but generally speaking, the way you play Stellaris is just, you see a food shortage? Build one farming district, no more. No need to oversaturate things, and that's it. Oh, and what to put in those planet slots? Well, you have a few choices. For research, obviously, do some research stuff, but generally speaking, try to play to the planet's strengths. And remember that planet defenses are absolutely pointless. As for the wartime, well, my strategy usually is to wait until the enemy is exhausted, then go conquer as much as I can from them, and then quickly stop the war when I hit a brick wall myself. So yeah, just wait until your enemy exhausts themselves against your fresh brick wall in those wonderful choke me daddy points. For now, this is going to be about it on how to have the best start in Stellaris. Of course, there are nuances and builds everywhere, so why not share your best below? Today I simply presented a more beginner friendly take, but let me know if you want a bit more in-depth or full playthrough maybe. As for now, I'll do go check out my Patreon if you want to support my work in turn, but setting that aside, I'm off to devour some pacifists!